we're in our camper. So after we kind of got our feet wet with the wolf pup, we did a few short trips close to home, just kind of getting used to it and figuring out how everything's going to work, where things are going to go, and just getting a feel for how, how it's going to work for us. We finally got our big trip, which was out to where? Glacier in Yellowstone. Which from Ohio is a bit of a drive. So this trip was... Uh, it was the longest one we had taken so far, and it was also the farthest one that we had taken driving as a family. So we definitely had to break it up. The first part of this trip was from Ohio to Minnesota. We stopped overnight at a Bass Pro in Minneapolis. We had a Harvest Host, but it was we it was further than Minneapolis and we kind of realized something on this trip that what the GPS says, how long it's going to take you to get there when you're pulling a trailer, completely different time, time frame. We had all the plans set. We had the reservations made. And then we realized because we hadn't really been pulling this thing all that long. When you're pulling a trailer, especially with an SUV, plan for it to be longer than the GPS says. Our GPS also did not account for Chicago traffic at five o'clock, which- And also desperately needing gas while you're stuck in the Chicago traffic. Our car started saying 30 miles to empty at the very beginning of Chicago, and it wasn't until we got through downtown, which was still about, what, 45 minutes? Mm -hmm. Just to get through downtown, before we could find an exit that we could get gas, which, was ridiculously expensive I think as we well. Paid seven a gallon, maybe. I don't know if it was that high. It was definitely over four a gallon. So after we finally got gas and got back on the road, we were at least an hour behind what we expected to be. I think two hours. It, it was a while. Mm -hmm. I think we tried to get as far as we could, and it was after midnight by the time mm -hmm. we finally stopped yeah. and we found a Bass Pro that we could stop at. So we just boondocked for the night in the parking lot of Bass Pro. The next... And that was our first time ever boondocking at a store overnight. We mm -hmm. had always been nervous to stop at like a Walmart or Cracker Barrel or Bass Pro or Cabela's. But it, at first, we were a little, it was a little nerve-wracking. Like, are we allowed? Like, and it was uncomfortable. But now, we do it all the time. Well, this particular one, too, we weren't the only ones that were boondocking there. I think there were three or four other campers mm -hmm. that were there. And the next morning, they had a coffee truck if we needed to we could go grab a cup of coffee i think the bigger concern was just getting on our way so we could yeah. get to where you know make up for lost time last time we did stop in fargo north dakota which if you've seen the movie which doesn't actually take place in fargo just uses the name of it it's got a famous ending scene with a wood chipper that we got to duplicate with our kids we did not complete it but we had a little bit of fun with that well, and we did and the older two they held Ashton up in it. Well, yeah, because Ashton was driving everybody <laughs> nuts in the car. He's the youngest, so his two older brothers finally got fed up, and the one that's outside is not the same one that was in the movie. It was just, it's just there because that's what everybody recognizes Fargo as, is the wood chipper, as the famous scene from the movie. Inside the Welcome Center is the, the actual, actual, actual wood chipper, which is autographed by, I think, Steve Buscemi and the Coen brothers. They have a little, like, like little corner of the Welcome Center, like that, it like has some movie posters and little memorabilia from the movie. So it was, it was kind of a neat stop. If you're a fan of the movie or movies in general, like we are, we've done all kinds of these locations and seen these memorabilia. It's, it's, a, it's a fun stop. It's a quick pull off right off the highway. Uh, you can get some information about North Dakota while you're there and get to see some bits of movie history. And not too far from that. How about how far was it? I think it was maybe halfway through the state. There was a town, Jamestown. Jamestown. It's a. It, it's well known for a few different reasons. One of them is the world's largest buffalo statue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which. Okay. <laughs> Again, a nice stop off if you have to stop anyway. It's, it gives you a break to get out. and But there was also the Louis L'Amour. If you are a 
I know my dad's a huge fan. I think he had like his entire collection of books, like on the bookshelf somewhere. But Louis Lamour, like he's like a Western author. It like that little town that you go into, they've got like his office i guess it used to be his office there's a pioneer village right next it, it, the whole thing is kind of a little park that you could stop at there's the buffalo at the very far end and then to get through there you walk through a small pioneer village hey, yes it is Feels great in here. <laughs> It's a cute little village. It's a good place mm -hmm. to stop. Um, if you're on your way across northern United States and you're going through North Dakota, that's a good place if you want to stop again, just to kind of take a break. After Jamestown, we there, went through. There was the Enchanted Highway. It's we didn't get off the highway to see the rest of it. We just saw what was along the main highway there. It's like a bypass. Yeah. You take yeah. you, you get off the highway. It's a bypass that you wind through. I think it's what twenty. Is it 10 miles, 20 miles Some, worth? Something like so that, that, yeah. And then, and then you but get there, back on the highway. But there was a, a sculpture, metal sculpture guy who would put these, build these really big roadside. Like, you could actually get out and park and walk up and see it, take your picture with it, or just drive by and see it. And finally, we made it to... Medora. 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 This is a town that really does roll up the sidewalks at night. We got there finally, what, about 6, 7 o'clock? Yeah, by the time we got the trailer unhitched and set up, and we were hungry, we didn't want to cook, so we're like, let's go into town. And We ate at the saloon there, which did not have air conditioning. Mm -hmm. All the windows were open, because again, they didn't expect it to be 106 right. degrees outside. It's normally like 60 degrees. We actually had friends who kind of did the same trip we did, only they did it backwards. So by the time they came to North Dakota, they said it was so cold they were wearing hoodies and bundling up because finally the heat wave was over. So so we got the tail end of the heat wave, mm -hmm. which from what I understand was actually the hottest that it had been there in several years. Yeah. So that was the night that we got there. The next day, which was one of the reasons that we stopped there in the first place, was Theodore Roosevelt National Park. Now, we've done national parks in the past. We're big national park people. You've got your passport book mm -hmm. that you get a stamp every time we go some. Even if we don't stay there very long, she has to hit the Welcome Center and get her stamp. And my walking stick medallion. Yes, she's got a tradition that she And our with. stickers for her magnets. We've been to a lot of freaking mm -hmm. places. And this is not all of them. This is why we need a bigger campers because we're running out of space for our magnets. We knew we needed to hit the road because we still had to get to Glacier that day. We were supposed to be there that night, but 
we wanted to go through the park and we actually discovered, stumbled across a nice little surprise by getting up so early to do this. Here we are at Theodore Roosevelt National Park. This is in uh, the South Unit, right? Yes. In Medora, North Dakota. And as you can see behind us, it is an absolutely gorgeous view. And we have discovered something this morning. You'll actually see it in some of this video. If you get here very early, like as the sun is coming up, you're gonna see a lot of animals, a lot of wildlife. We've got some footage here where we drove past an open field of bison and meerkats. And uh, they get kind of close. It, it's, it is pretty cool. Definitely don't wanna get out of your car there. So yeah, enjoy uh, some of this video here from Theodore Roosevelt National Park. close the way I'm walking I've got the Sun pointing right here which means everything back here is lit in a way that you can get some really nice pictures so Theodore Roosevelt National Park ideal time appears to be first thing in the morning as the Sun's coming up That was the first time we got to see any animals of that nature up close. Because we're not big morning people. Mm -mm. I don't She's think not. We're, we're not night people either, either. So I don't. If she doesn't but have yeah. at least a cup of coffee, she's non-functional yeah, for the day. But I think so. now I kind of am. I actually enjoy going to the parks now early. Mm -hmm. I I would rather see a sunset than a sunrise, but I do like the aspect of seeing the animals in the park in the morning. And it's also really calm. 
Mm-hmm. Like, you don't have the crowd. You don't have all the motors and all Sometimes the Sometimes there's the chatter. fog, which makes the pictures really good. And So, if you get a chance to go, mm-hmm. go first thing in the morning. It, it's well worth getting up mm-hmm. early to go see. And then, right at, what was that right outside? It was an old uh, meat factory? A Sla- slaughterhouse. slaughterhouse. They had remnants of it. They had, like, the smokestack and some of the just random remnants from it and there's a plaque that says talks about the history of it it's it's a park now it's a lot of it is an open field but there are pieces of it that are still there be careful if you have young ones because some of it is older metal it is kind of rusted but it's it's fun to explore they've got Mm -hmm. some plaques that you can look at it it is a uh it was nice to get out and run yeah. the children before putting them in the car for another eight-hour leg. Of... Go wear yourselves out before yeah. we have to drive yeah. all day again. So, yeah, that was the first leg of our trip. and Definitely a learning experience, pulling a big trailer. Yes. Most we had pulled was the pop-up, and we drove far with the pop-up, but that's... I mean, I don't even think you realized the pop-up was there half the time. Right. That was definitely a learning experience that we now take into account when we plan our trips because you're not going to be doing over 65 unless mm-hmm. you're insane when you're pulling a trailer with an especially SUV especially with high winds through. right after we were done at the slaughterhouse is when we had another long drive this was where we were once we got to where we were going the trailer was actually going to sit for a, a couple mm-hmm. of days um we were meeting up with your family mm-hmm. in glacier so they had rented an Airbnb. They were already there. So we were going to meet them there. And once we got there, we could park the trailer, let it kind of sit and not have to be in full use the mm-hmm. entire time. So that's where we wound up going for the next leg of our trip. And we'll pick that up in our next video. But for now, here are some outtakes. <laughs> Good call. Now we're even. <laughs> The door was closing on us. Mm -hmm. I kept seeing red over here. Our door is closing again on us. It's windy out. Where are we? I don't know. (laughs) It was very windy. There was a lot of white knuckles. There goes the door again. (laughs) Welcome to Sierra Roosevelt National Park. Where? North Carolina. No. (laughs) North Dakota. Okay. We're not by the ocean. <laughs> so after a first few short runs and get not short runs, I'm probably gonna cut that out. Stay. Now you completely threw me off. Because you keep throwing me off. <laughs> okay.